Hi everyone, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions, and here we are at Universal Studio. I'm here with Squeaky. Um, Rami did not want to come. She mentioned something about us being um, heretical apostates. So, um, yeah, so we're doing this without Rami and Raggy. They're at Magic Kingdom, and yeah, it already feels very different with the... Uh, Going through the, um, whatever, through the security. You do, but it, this feels very much like, I don't know, more generic so far. And so far, in my first, you know, five minutes of being here. So I'm going to have to gain a more informed opinion instead of making these judgments after the first five minutes. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what all we're going to be doing here today. It is our day at Universal Studios. So here we are walking. We just hit Islands of Adventure, right, Squeaky? Yep. Yep, we just walked through the, uh, so that thing earlier was like their downtown Disney thing. They're playing lots of good Mannheim Steamroller music. I love Mannheim Steamroller. We um, apparently won't get a concert from them today, but um, yeah, we're here at Islands of Adventure right now. It looks, it's very different from uh, what I'm used to at uh, Disney World. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely not as themed as um, Disney, but what can you do, you know? Yeah, it seems pretty good so far. Haven't ridden anything yet, but I'm sure once we do, I'll be madly in love with it, maybe. Here we are, we're now getting ready to enter something, looks like Hogsmeade. Yes, we are getting ready to enter the Hogsmeade Village. It's gonna be fun. Wow. Oh yeah, looky there. There's something that looks a little more intense than I would probably do. Oh yes, always a good time. Hogwarts and Hogsmeade. What? There's a snowman. Oh wow, yeah, this does kind of feel like a little European village, yeah. yeah. Some magic right here. So we're here in Dervishan Bangs. This is a really neat shop filled with all sorts of Harry Potter swag. Squeak. Luma's glasses up there. Can you see? Luma. There's something. Dervishan Bangs. Oh, Luna Lovegood's glasses way up there. You guys may not be able to see it, as I think Squeaky's um, grabbing a photo that I'll put. But um, Squeaky found something at um, uh, Dervisham Bangs. House, um, Pride. Uh, House Pride, a Slytherin shirt there. Um, I'm a Hufflepuff, but I told her there is no way I am wearing glitter puff. Oh. Like, that's not gonna happen. So yeah, Dervisham Bangs, uh, definitely, this whole thing definitely transports you into the Harry Potter universe, and it does a perfect job of doing that. Like, you feel like you're there, man. 
so we just got done with um, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. It was, uh, what did you think about it, Squeaky? Oh, I loved it. It was so good. The queue was great. It had a lot of stuff from the movies. Um, the ride itself was awesome. It was very, like, you know, high speed. Like, there was a lot of moving. You don't go upside down, but you go pretty much every other way. Um, you know, there were characters from the movies. They were awesome animatronics which I love, you know, so it's not just a screen ride, you do get some awesome animatronics to look at as well. Definitely, yeah, it was um, pretty amazing, yeah, the Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, right over here is the Flight of the Hippogriff, I don't know if um, we're gonna do that, because remember, just a few days ago, I wasn't feeling too well, but I've, I mean, I'm able to keep everything down even after that, so, um, yeah, if, if I can do that, I can do pretty much anything. Um, yeah, so we're going to head on over, maybe grab some butterbeer, and check out the Tri-Wizard Tournament. It should be fun. Alright, so we're here with the butterbeers, the frozen variety, here at Harry Potter World. These are supposed to be really good, so let's see. Kind of like a orange creamy soda root beery floaty sort of thing. Not that bad. Is it as uh, is it like as amazing as everyone's going on about? No, but it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> is it worth the price? No, but it is pretty good. <laughs> Now we're heading into Dr. Seuss Land. Um, Seuss Landing, yeah buddy. Um, you know, it's one of those things, um, 
you know, you could make the ill-gotten argument that I'm too old for this, but, um, I loved Dr. Seuss as a kid. Oh my gosh, I would, I wore out the cover of uh, my Marvin K. Mooney book, and, oh um, man. I all uh, yes, you, you could not part me from old Marvin K. Mooney. I mean, I just love Dr. Seuss and all of our favorite characters. You know, um, Foo Foo the Snoo. Is there a Foo Foo the Snoo meet and greet here? I haven't heard of it. Oh man, they need to get Foo Foo the Snoo in here. He was the best. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is fun. Yeah. Seuss Landing, and they, I mean, they did it up for Christmas, as you can see here, like, they, they are not kidding. Yeah, this is, this is really, really good. So here we are at the old Circus McGurkis Commissary here at Seuss Land at Universal Studios. We um, went ahead and got ourselves some uh, cheese pizza combos with a uh, salad and a breadstick. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little nibble and see what this is all about. Wow, it's, it's a big, complicated mess of a pizza. It's a cheese monster. It is. This monster is a good word for it. theme I'm noticing with Universal Food. Overpriced for what you get. It's not horrible, like, this tastes very similar to, like, Pizza Hut or something, but, um, yeah, not worth what you pay for it. There's a, you get kind of ripped off here, but I've been really liking the customer service and the overall decor and theming, but this part does feel a little rip-off-y, so... Yeah, what can you do, you know? How's it going? Hey, how are you? Good. Yeah? That's so nice. Aww. Oh, okay. I know, I'm so nice like that. You are. I like your outfits too. Oh, well, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We just had a pretty not good lunch at um, Circus McGurkis. It was less good than Pizza Hut, and now we're getting ready to ride the Hogwarts Express, so I need to go ahead and start digging out some tickets, because it's... Uh, it lets you out at a different park and you need a ticket for it, so I need to go ahead and start digging in my bag. So we just got off of the Hogwarts Express, and now we're into Diagon Alley? Are we in Diagon Alley right now, Squeaky? Yes. So this is Diagon Alley. Over there is um, the Simpsons world. Um, it just seems so weird to me. Like, that whole thing is just so weird. Like, Diagon Alley here, Simpsons there. It It is weird, but... Um, yeah, we're, um, there wasn't a Dementor attack when we rode the Hogwarts Express. It was still a fun ride, but, you know, everyone talks about the Dementor attack, but it, it must not happen both ways or something. I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, we're here at Diagon Alley, and I probably want to take a quick uh, detour over to Nocturne Alley and get some of my dark wizard stuff, because even though I'm a Hufflepuff, I'm as dark as they come. There's the night bus with um, Stanley, a dark wizard, very much like myself. I'm the world's darkest Hufflepuff. Yeah. But yeah, you're, you can see. Oh, look! 
Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, though, they definitely are good at creating the um, illusion and, like, bringing you in there, but, um... Yeah, I just don't like how, you know, you can glance across Diagon Alley and see the Simpsons land. It, it's weird to me. It's really, really weird, but... Yeah, we are having a really good day here at, um the Universal Studios theme parks. All right, so I think I misspoke earlier. Um, I think this is Diagon Alley. Wow, okay. Yeah, so that might have just been like some random London street um, that we were seeing earlier. And this is the real Diagon Alley. Throughout much of the day, it wasn't all that crowded, but now it's really starting to pick up. Um, there were a lot of um, special tour groups uh, wandering around, as you can see, but um, it's picking up now, and yeah, so we're here at the real Diagon Alley right now, so yeah, this, this is a lot more like it. So I guess that was like a London street, and here we are in the wizarding area. And uh, now the theming is, like, spot on. Okay. All is forgiven, I should suppose. Oh, look at that. Mmm. Glorious. And, of course, the Gringotts Bank ride. We are not going to do that. I mean, we just ate at Circus McGurkis, and, um... It's almost like I'm um, trying to digest a brick, so we won't be doing um, the Green Gods Bank, but again, like, the theming here is, like, really spot on. I don't know what I was saying earlier. Uh, yeah, this, this is the magic. You look up, um, I'm really excited about the Nintendo area now. Like, I was kind of worried about that, but the way Universal is handling this theming, it's pretty spot on. I think right now we're in the Weasley's um, joke shop here. Oh my goodness. Wow. Actually, a ton of this looks like a lot of fun, but yeah, TSA would not be okay with me uh, bringing it back. I mean, you gotta love how, even in the Wizarding World, they legally still have to put the, um, warning choking hazard, small parts not suitable for kids under three years. You know, you, you can't have your little uh, baby wizards choking on some hazardous material here. That's just not cool, man. And, of course, pins of all sorts of things. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is... Wow, and like up at the top they have a fireworks show. Yeah, this is... A lot... What, the guy who does um, a romance month every November can't be um, interested in this? Does it work? Um... Let's see, let's, let's, let's read on this here, if I can get there. Um... Love Potion, Liquid Sweets, uh, what's in it, uh, not a whole lot of fat, uh, 100 calories, um, no cholesterol, 8 grams of sugar, corn syrup, I didn't think the British really used, uh, high fructose corn syrup as much as we did, allergy information, shares equipment with, um, soy, milk, and I'm eggs. I'm allergic to love. I'm allergic to love. I can't have oh. it. <laughs> yeah, it... It doesn't say if it works or not. Uh, how stupid would I be if I got this? I mean, I was thinking about it because it's such a cute bottle, you know? Like, just even for display purposes. Who would I use it on? I don't know. Some lucky lady. How would I pull it off? Um, yeah, because, like, consent is cool, so you can't just put it in someone's drink because... That is so wrong. Yeah, that would that would not be okay in this day and age. It, it's never okay Actually, to just... it is kind of a little rapey now that you think about it. Yeah, uh, it's... Uh, I'm on the fence about it. It's $10. What do we think? Um, I don't know. I mean, 
It's a very cute bottle, but ten dollars. Ten dollars. We'll, we'll we'll go to Nocturne Alley, circle back to this, and I'll let you guys know if I uh, go ahead and get the love potion. Here we go, heading into the darkness. Mm hmm And boy, they are not kidding when they say Nocturne Alley. It's oh, dark. Like it feels comfortable here. Yeah, well, as the world's darkest Hufflepuff, I feel comfortable here too as well. Isn't that like being the world's darkest marshmallow? <laughs> I have no response for that. And like, just because I can't see doesn't mean I'm not like dark or anything like that. Yeah, I can't see what I'm doing. Can we go into any of these shops? Ooh, yeah, let's go in there. Thank you, sir. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh my gosh, this is, this is really neat. I don't know if anyone can see any of this, but um, we got a little burby in his skeletal form. He ain't wearing too much today. It's um, casual Thursday. Wow. Yeah, this is the stuff for the world's darkest Hufflepuff. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see this, but lots of instruments of uh, torture or what have you. You know, I've always wanted a torture room in my house, because if you watch my channel, you know I don't live in a good neighborhood, so yeah, a torture room would be very, very good. So wanted Bellatrix Lestrange, you see I have a pop of her on my travel desk, and yeah, this is good stuff right here. I mean, it makes sense to have, like, troll anatomia, like, you know, because you need to know that. Yeah. No, there's nothing dark about that. Got a mermaid skeleton there, but, yeah. Now, I guess this is one of those, like, motion things you move around and it, uh, responds to your motion. Cool. They simply waved their wands and made a bridge. Before they could cross, however, they found their pot blocked by a hooded figure. It was dead and he benched because travelers usually drowned in the river. The death was coming. He pretended to congratulate the three brothers upon their magic and said that each had earned a prize for having been clever enough to evade him. The oldest brother, who was a combative man, asked for one more powerful than any in existence, a wall that must always win duels for its owner. So death fashioned him one from an elder tree. Then the second brother, who was an arrogant man, decided that he wanted to humiliate death still further and asked for the power to recall others from death. So they picked up a stone from the riverbank and gave it to him. Finally, death turned to the third brother, a humble and wise man who he did not trust in death. So he asked for something that would enable him to go more from that place without being followed by death. And death most unwillingly handed over his own cloak of invisibility. In due course, the brothers separated, 
each for his own destination, the first brother travelled to a distant village. So we just left um, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Wow, speaking. Um, we just left the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. We did Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley and Nocturne Alley. Of course, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is actually spread across the two different parks of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventures. But right now, we are heading in to the Simpsons land, which I recently understand Disney procured the rights to Fox and the Simpsons and all of that, which is really, really weird, you know? And I'll let you guys um, debate in the comments section below uh, what you uh, think about that and about Disney's creative integrity there, but um, yeah, we're going to have some fun here in uh, Simpsons land. It's been a pretty good day so far. They have been doing a very good job of um, theming everything. I just wish, you know, I don't know, it's weird to like just sort of wander in from one thing to the next, but I mean, they more than make up for it once you're actually here. It's like, it's legit, man. And we got Krusty the Clown and um, the Simpsons uh, ride. The Quickie Mart and Sideshow Bob, all your favorite Simpsons characters. I actually haven't seen an episode of The Simpsons in, it must be over a decade now, but, um, always a good time. And again, some of that amazing theming that they've been doing here at Universal, you really feel like you're in Springfield. You got Moe's Tavern, you got the Quickie Mart, and... Krusty's Funland. We just got off the Krusty Funland ride. That was really, really good. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, kind of like a fakey roller coaster. It feels like it, though, because, you know, you're like in a surround thing and you see it perfectly and you feel it, so it might as well be the real deal, you know? And, of course, we got Chief Wiggum here eating his donut. And the Krusty Burger. All sorts of good things. The Lard Lad Donuts that uh, came to life in that one Halloween special. Yeah, they, their Halloween specials are fantastic. But yeah, it's been a very good day here at um, the Universal Studios. And as you... Yeah, I recorded in the previous one the Lard Lad Donuts. After the Lard Lad, it's the Bumblebee guy. Um, and now we're, we just sort of walk out of Springfield. I, uh, I wish the transitions weren't so jarring, but um, I mean, the theming is absolutely spot on. It like really drags you into um, the universe there and you feel like you're actually there. But, you know, just like for a first time or just casually strolling through, you know, and being so used to Disney, I'm, it's, it's like jarring, like all of a sudden, okay, I'm here. This reminds me of a park, I haven't mentioned it yet, but um, I know over on the Tim Tracker channel, he mentioned it. Um, we have a local park in our city called um, Kings Island, and it'll do a lot of that sort of thing where you just sort of walk from one area to another, and there's not a lot of um, transition, but um, looks like we're making our way towards E.T., the extraterrestrial. Yeah. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> we can, we get it sometimes. It should be good stuff. I love that movie. E.T. is a great film. I need to get a working VHS player. My VCR broke, and I only have the film on VHS. Or just download it or get it on Blu-ray or digital. I guess I'm going to have to, yeah. 
Yeah, so we are going to check out E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Oh. That is a kawaii E.T. Ouch, all oh, E.T. Wonder if they'll have any of the um, Atari video games in here. <laughs> Alrighty, so we just finished up our time at the kids' area here at Universal Studios. Seuss Land, of course, was Islands of Adventure, so that's their kids' land. So we're heading down the street a little bit here. We rode E.T. It was absolutely delightful. Animatronics were beautiful. Yeah, Squeaky loved it. We love E.T. That, that is such a great film. Not as good of an Atari video game. Not, not a, it isn't this big black void of horribleness that everybody says it is, but um, it certainly isn't a good video game, but, you know, one of the best films probably, at, le at least in the last 30 or so years. Actually, E.T. is more than 30 years old. Wow. I, f I feel ancient now. Ah, good times. So now we're making our way down... I guess what you would normally associate with um, Universal Studios, we have the Universal Horror Makeup Show, so that'll be fun, and it looks like Scooby-Doo and the gang. We used to have Scooby-Doo at our park at King's yeah. Island, and um, Scooby-Doo has left. Yeah, we now have the Peanuts in, you know, but what can you do? Yeah, Universal Studios. It's pretty fun looking. I like what I see. Carl Lamley, who of course stole um, Oswald from Walt Disney and didn't even do anything with him, so... Yeah, we aren't going to eat because we're still trying to digest um, Circus McGurkis, but um, yeah, we'll just take a look in here, see all of this memorabilia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy, there's the Wolfman. That was always um, Raggy's favorite as a kid, especially Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Might even be here somewhere. Sounds good. Squeaky's gonna tie her shoe. It's been a while since I've seen so many of these movies. Um, everyone knows the Spanish language version of Dracula is um, the best one there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I need to really re-watch all of these films. Bela Lugosi. Or is that the creature from the Black Lagoon? I don't, I don't know. It's been so long since I've watched any of these. Oh, but and they even uh, do it up for Christmas a little bit in here as well. Oh, uh, this is a delight. And what have we got over here? We got some mad science equipment. You know, sometimes just fruit juice in a test tube that you're boiling. Heck, that looks good and sciency. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was... I'm blanking on it. Uh, I need to rewatch and brush up on these. All my horror movie-loving friends will be so disappointed in me on this. But, um, yeah, this is the, um, you know, Universal Studios Horror Cafe. It's a good show. Oh, we got more stuff over here. Oh, wow. I don't want to disturb people while they're eating, but, um, got a thing of Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. And it looks like they play, like, little trailers when you chow down, so this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Some more fantastic theming here at uh, 
Universal when we started vlogging today. It was um, almost completely pitch black with, not pitch black, but you know, cloudy. Yeah, that's the word. And we have a beautiful studio looking thing and look at that tree. Oh my goodness. They really do it up for Christmas just like they do over at uh, Disney World. Yeah, they are definitely um, really bringing it. It's a very good show. So we just got done with um, uh, Jimmy Fallon. What'd you think of it, Squeaky? It was a pretty good ride. Um, it's like, you know, a theater style ride in its motion. Yeah, it was definitely the worst of them, yeah. Of course, I haven't really watched any sort of late night comedians in quite a while, but yeah, it was the weakest of them. We're now getting ready to watch a parade of some sort. I don't know what way I need to be looking, but um, we'll look at Squeak Do for a little bit. Bye. Yeah, so I'll eventually find this parade and um, record a little bit of it. We are having a good day here at Universal Studios. Oh, that nice Art Deco building is really uh, decked out for Christmas. Yeah, buddy. That is some goodness right there.